Hello everyone, I'm Yu Ji Han. Welcome to In the Newsroom, an empty newsroom to be exact. It's really the time of the day that a lot of our reporters are out in the fields trying to cover their stories. And especially today, we have quite a number of major events taking place in the country. Um, for one, the GGDS, which stands for Global Green Growth Summit. And down under in the coastal city of Yosu, we've got an exciting global event coming up called the uh, Yosu Expo 2012. And also earlier in the day, Bank of Korea announced its key interest rate. So uh, quite a number of stories we're tracking down at at this hour. So I'm going to uh, make a couple of phone calls to our reporters to see what they are up to. Hello, Tony. How are you enjoying the sea breeze down in Yosu? Well, Yosu is great as usual. How are you doing? Not bad here, you know, good myself. Uh, what is the atmosphere there like? Well, today it's quite slow because the expo site is supposed to be close to the media because of the preparations for tomorrow's event. However, yesterday it was quite busy because it was media day and there were journalists from all over the world um, touring the site. I see. So before we get into any details, uh, let's start with the headlines. Um, do a little wrap up of yours. Let's start with that. Sure, I can do that. Well, the 2012 Yasu Expo officially invites world journalists to tour the site of the expo. The Yazoo Expo invites journalists from around the world for its Media Day, officially welcoming 500 journalists from 20 different countries to tour the expo site. François Hollande grabs victory in France's presidential election, becoming the country's first socialist president in nearly two decades. And here in the nation, regulators suspend four more savings banks as part of their efforts to weed out distressed secondary lenders. Korea approves a law that will enable the country to introduce a greenhouse gas emission trading system in 2015, an effort to go greener. Korea's producer price growth slows to its 26-month low in April, giving the central bank more flexibility in its monetary policy. The ruling Senate party names a new floor leader ahead of the new National Assembly. The floor leader-elect is a key aide of the party leader and anticipated presidential candidate Park Geun-hye. The Korean government lifts restrictions on property sales in the country's most expensive real estate market, the three southern Seoul districts of Gangnam, Seocho, and Songpa. A Russian airplane goes missing in south of Jakarta with 50 people on board, and rescue efforts are intensifying. Thanks for that, Sung Hee. Now you've been down in the expo site since Tuesday. You must have a, a chance to look around, talk to people from the organizing committee and the journalists from here and uh, elsewhere in the world. So what was your personal favorite? Any facility or venue that you'd like to uh, uh, recommend? Well, I like a lot of attractions here right now, but I think my personal favorite would have to be the aquarium because I personally really, really like beluga whales and the aquarium in Yasu is the first aquarium in Korea to be carrying the beluga whales. So I think that's really exciting for me personally. And also the sky tower is really nice because up at the very top of the building, you can actually take a look at the whole um, entire side of the expo. And I think that's quite beautiful as well. Right, and you hear that there's going to be a number of events there as well. Uh, any ceremonies that we should be keeping our eyes on? Well, tomorrow, the night before the um, official opening of the um, Yasu Expo, the president will be coming. All the VIPs are coming down to Yasu for the event. Um, and I thought I would be too, um, I don't know, too busy to just handle the event by myself. So I asked Jihei to come down to help me, so I'm waiting for her to arrive. Huang Jihei, right? Your uh, Huang sister. Yes. So, you know, let me just uh, bring in Jihei. Hello. Hey, Jihei. Do you want to come and say hello to... Uh, yeah, sure. Sangi? <laughs> Hi. You know, I, um, you guys done this uh, a number of times before uh, 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 back back in uh, down there in Yo. So, how was mm -hmm. your teamwork? Well, Song Hee will be uh, covering most of the ceremony that will be held before the the opening. So, and I'll be I'm trying to book an interview with a person with a college ambassador from the United States who who's coming to Korea to promote the USA Pavilion at Yosu Expo. So I hope it goes well. And I hope I can meet other foreign journalists from, from other countries that came to Korea to cover the story on Yosu Expo. So I hope the team works 
uh, team, our team. Our team will uh, could work out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it will, I think. Anything that you'd like to add to that, Songhee? Um, well, I think I work well with Jihei, so right. and she does a great job. On <laughs> Good to know. Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll let you get back to work. Bye. Bye. So, you know, um, Songhee, I know things are going well and that the media hype and everything. You know, people are very excited to know what's going to happen there. We already saw the media day and it looks fantastic. But there's also concerns that uh, due to the low ticket sales uh, that this might not uh, be as successful as everyone hoped it to be. What's your take on this? Well, still there is, well, the event is like three months long. So I think there is still plenty of time for people to come check this place out. So um, I think it's too early to worry about this event being a success or not. And just looking at the site itself, it looks amazing. I hope what it probably lacks is more um, international promotion. So I think the organizing committee should work on bringing people from overseas to look at the Yasu Expo. Okay, well, Sangi, it was great talking to you. Hope you have a safe journey back. Yes, I hope to see you in Seoul soon. Okay, Sangi, bye. Bye, Jihei. So now I'm going to call uh, Kim Yeon Ji, who is at a Lotte Hotel, to cover the uh, the GGGS, which is an ongoing summit on green growth. Uh, we'll see what she has to say. Ah, oh, hi, Yeonji. Hi, Tia. Good afternoon. Is this a good time to talk? Oh, yes. Okay. I mean, you were uh, out there since very early in the morning. How are the atmosphere there? Uh, there are thousands of people, 1,000 people from uh, Korea and overseas. Uh, these are leading intellectuals and uh, pr practitioners who uh, have devised this paradigm, uh, green growth. And so, uh, you know, the media interest is also high. Uh, it's very great here. And because President Lee myung you know, was here uh, earlier today, uh, the security was very tight. Uh, so it's been kind of challenging to cover uh, stories and to be here, but it's also very exciting to be with these leading uh, intellectuals and world leaders. So uh, did you find anyone interesting to talk to? Uh, yes, uh, actually I will be go one-on-one uh, -on -one with uh, Professor Jeremy Rifkin from the University of Pennsylvania and he's uh, the author of the book called The Third Industrial Revolution. And as you can guess, uh, you know, we lived the age of the second industrial revolution so far, but then, you know, uh, the, this industrial revolution based on fossil fuels uh, is going to go extinct. You know, we, our existence uh, as humans uh, is getting threatened because, you know, the, all the things that are happening, you know, climate change and things like that. So Professor Rifkin says we need a new game plan, you know, that that's compelling, that can compel business leaders and developing countries to go on board with the rest of the world to fight uh, climate change and then to, uh, you know, to uh, find ways to pursue uh, economic benefits while doing uh, green initiatives. Yeah, it'd be a great, uh, you know, a coverage on how Korea is playing a huge role in green growth and green economy, like you said. So thank you, Anji, for talking to us. I'll see you back in the office later. Okay, see you then. Okay, bye. Bye. Oh, she's on your back. Hi, Ji, it's on there. Yeah, how was Bank of Korea? Um, like a lot of analysts and experts have suggested and expected widely, the Bank of Korea froze their interest rate yet again for 11 consecutive months. Okay, no surprise there. But I'd like to talk about your Sunday piece on Olympic champion, um, this figure skater, Kim yeon -ah. It's not every day that we get to see her, so what was she like in real life? Uh, I've actually seen her a couple of times in her last year's Eyes show, mm -hmm. as well as her Pyeongchang ambassador roles. Mm -hmm. And this year she was as stunning as always, but in a different sex. Kim Yuna's combined world record of nearly 230 points logged in the 2010 Vancouver Winter Olympics matches the top tier even when scaled to men's results. And in her newest gala performance, Kim actually dressed like a man, complete with a hat, and skated to Michael Bublé's All of Me in her fifth eye show held over the Children's Day weekend. But, of course, Kim jazzed up in the way only she can 
by using the hat to accentuate her signature in a bower. With Kim currently not skating competitively, her show is the only way these days to catch the busy skating queen on the ice. But for the fans, the street is more than fair as it takes the art to new level each year. Song Jisong, Arirang News. So what's in store for Yana now? I mean, everyone's been wondering how she's been doing, and apparently she's doing great now. Exactly, but the thing is, she's spending more time off the ice now, doing her maybe commercials and a lot of roles she's playing as ambassador of the, the Goodwill um, or NGOs. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people wonder if she will make a comeback on the ice as a comp competitor in World Championships or the other comp competitions, but she still declined to comment whether she will do return and that was also declined to, to answer during her press conference but I think she's now uh, maybe eyeing on a, n a new role in her f in her phase of life as a prob probably a lot of people wish and herself also expressed her will to actually run for the IOC committee member as, as, as an athlete. Mm, 2018 was it? Exactly. When we host the Winter Olympics here, she has once expressed that she, uh, an, I, an IOC member is a very uh, honorable, respected position that she will um, happily accept if she makes, um, she does make it. Oh, I see. I mean, speculation is that you know, figure skater. I mean, you must know better, but figure skaters they don't have uh, much. Uh, they retire early in their age. So, um, what's the speculation like? I mean, is she going to be back? It's still a question mark, right? Exactly. With the Sochi Olympic just two years left to go, she'll be on uh, 24 then. But um, although she has said like maybe her best years are not are already. She has already accomplished a lot that she ever wished for. Um, current world champion is 25 years old, and uh, several skaters do get their you know best days in the later career of their lives. So, if she does appear again and compete in the Olympics, I'm sure she will still get a good shot at it. I mean, Jisun, you've been covering a lot of sports-related stories. Anything that's coming up? that we should know about? Um, next week uh, we have a Korea Cup, the yacht competition, not competition, a race that goes around the, the, the Korean Peninsula and ends the race at Dokdo and Ullungdo of our... That must be <laughs> meaningful exactly. for a lot of the Koreans here. So um, as Korea Today and our Arirang News is also expected to cover the, day, the days when they do make a race around our the Dokdo Islet. So I'll be seeing you then. Oh, right. Okay. Looking forward to it. So, let me get back to you. I'm Hoseha, I'm a new reporter and I'm in a probation period for three months and this is the second month in this office. Today is Parents' Day in Korea, so my senior colleague Lee Khan Yi, she's going to cover a story about Parents' Day. So I'm just uh, going to follow her and see how she works on the field. Um, the event starts at 11 a.m. It is exactly 10.50 a.m. I think we might be a little late, but uh, we are going to go to this event. So we are just not rushing to just cover this event and get what we can. Uh, I've looked for like other events, uh, so I found this news article, and it says the Gangnamgu office they are gonna hold an event that commemorates the Parents' Day at 2 p.m. this afternoon. She was crying all the time, so I was holding my tears back so that I don't cry in front of her. She 
she has been uh, looking after her mother-in-law for the past 10 years. So I think she, de she deserves to get this award today. Story person story about the man, I would follow them and keep up with them. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They just want to avoid that or like whatever. Um, but not focus too much on her story, but also just um, in general, just cover today's holiday. And I'm looking forward to going to this other event in Gangnam where they are uh, recognizing thousands of parents. And so I'm going to see how they do it there. I'm looking at the program right now and it says from uh, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. they're going to give out carnations to, uh, to the senior citizens. And then one, I found one interesting thing. There's a photo zone right here. They're going to uh, let the people wear the high school uniforms so that they can take photos of them wearing school uniforms. So I think it's an interesting event taking place here. <laughs> I see senior citizens there, they're all getting their nails done. So maybe try getting one of their interviews and see what kind of responses you get. So okay, okay. It was good to know her feelings by interviewing her, even though I couldn't get like uh, more uh, more stories, but it's, at least I got her feelings, so I'm quite satisfied with it. So glad Sina was with me today. Um, Sina, you helped me so much. I hope you also learned through the whole process. I mean, you got to see it, you know, right on. You know, have yeah. the first-hand experience of what it's like to come to an event like this. The different thing about today's package is that it was very unprepared and unorganized. But still, it was very exciting because we just uh, we just come here without pre any preparations. We saw what's going on on the site. So I think it's going to turn out to be a very exciting package. So as promised last week, we are finally out. Not far away from the office, but still, it's, it was worth a try. Yes. It feels great. I can't remember the last time I've seen this much daylight. <laughs> right, early morning. Yeah, it's bedtime for me right now, actually. So normally you'd be asleep by now. Yeah, yeah. I'm taking my nap. <laughs> yep. I mean, funnily enough, I mean, we all had the, had to experience the early morning blues. Yeah. And I think it was all about, like, you know, self-discipline, time management, and getting your brain working early in the morning. I Are think I'm getting, I'm getting used to it, waking up at 2 in the morning. It's, it's tough, but... We've been doing. I've been doing it for two and a half months now, and I think it's getting into my kick into my system now. So I'm kind of um, around. When I go to bed, it will be around 2 p.m. I'll take take about two hour nap until 4 p.m. and then I'll stay awake for maybe two hours, three hours, and then I'll go to bed at seven. Yeah. I remember when I did the uh, morning. My bedtime was 16:30 sharp, 4:30 p.m. 30, but oh, 30. 4.30 every day because I need my, you know, 10 hours of sleep. <laughs> 10 hours of sleep? <laughs> no, I, I can't ample. function. Don't, don't we need about 8 hours? <laughs> no, but I, you know, for me it's 10. And um, yeah, I mean, I have a lot of respect for Hyunggyung and Taeyeon, of course, you know. How's and, your afternoon? Um, You're back to normal. I, I can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> I did the morning for a while, I did the night, and now um, it's actually at first, it was actually pretty weird getting used to the daily cycle, like ordinary people. But um, yeah, it's nice, you know, just being able to meet friends in the evening, to have like nice dinner. Because you know, you do mornings, you can't have dinner, obviously, because no. I'm asleep by then. No you do the night, life. you're working, so you can't have dinner. So. Yeah, I have like nice dinner plans and it's, it's good. I mean, speaking of broadcasting and all that, I, I've been meaning to ask you, uh, you guys, but um, is there anything that particular that you do or do not do before you get on air? Oh, what do you, what good do you question, do? Good question, right? Um, I gotta, I mean, 
I have this rosary here and I need to have this um, at all times. And right before we go on air, I, I would say a quick prayer or two. And yeah, and you know, when we play our packages, I'm always just, you know, turning this and yeah, I think, um, really? I yeah, have no idea. yeah, one time it was one of those mornings and I had left it at home mm -hmm. and I, oh, I was so nervous. So I, um, I had someone deliver this to me to work really? from home. Wow. That's, yeah. that's how important that is. To yeah, it is pretty important. I mean, as far as like I'm on air, I should, I need to have this with me. What about you? Uh, I try to stay away from these uh, sweets <laughs> as, as much as possible because it's, it gets slurpy when you, you, when you have long packages to read and you know it just gets on you and also I think getting yourself into a good mood is one thing because it shows on screen mm -hmm. if you're in a bad mood when you're just uh, when you're distracted by I know Jihei a few days earlier um, Today. Yes, you, you had a, she had a little episode oh, really? right before the broadcast, and I could see it in her. I mean, you know, she was squeezing out that smile, but the smile wasn't a smile. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just out there. So try to meditate and get that out of my system. That's one thing. How about you? Um, for me, I usually I don't pray, but I kind of clear my throat before uh, sh before the light goes on because you know once we go on air, air you can't really do <clears throat> you know and it's just one of my things that I have to do that although I to I'm totally fine <laughs> but I just do that because it just makes me feel more secure about the whole show it's an hour long and also good health I mean maintaining good health is one thing for all of us I mean you know it's all about the voice how we deliver it and if you get catch cold then it's gonna be quite detrimental to our newscast do you remember the time I had a terrible cold when oh, I did the morning that. <laughs> and but and I I barely had my voice mm. and it was really disturbing to listen to my voice I yeah I remember watching you she's going to die somebody's gonna help her <laughs> but it was more i don't know i felt really bad because you know for our viewers that's exactly not the way we should be presenting ourselves so yeah we should all maintain good health especially our morning crew yeah and night crew thank you very much and the afternoon crew oh, of course <laughs> can go on forever i mean but i think i mean this really gave our viewers a good chance to like you know, dispelled your illusion about you know our our, our newscasts as well as uh, news anchors. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they must be wondering what it, what it's like, and I think we gave them a rough idea what it's like. That's right. I mean, like you know, when we do the news, we are all very. That's a very very well refined version of yes, us, yes. right? <laughs> um, most of the rest of the time, we're pretty you know, a laid little back. bit laid back, <laughs> loose. Perhaps they'll be like many, many sharper beings than us, probably. <laughs> but yeah. Empty news room, to be exact. I to you about Hana and Hana. Hana. I'm <laughs> 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 